So we've been dealing with parabolas, which are the U-shaped things that are based off of the parent function um, f of x equals x squared. And if you know the vertex, then you only need two other points. So essentially, they should say you need three points um, to graph these things. Now, of these of these different graphs, which one is the easiest for me to see which where the parabola looks like? I think this one would by far be the easiest right here. Now, what we're going to be doing is we are... I've, I've talked to you about three different forms that a quadratic can take. It can take the standard form. We usually call that ax squared plus bx plus c, where you can see that um, a, b, and c are just numbers. These are numbers. So in this particular case, we're talking about 3, negative 12, and 1. We also have the vertex form. And we talked a lot about the vertex form when we're talking about graphing. Now, um, this right here is um, in vertex form. This would be a parabola that is um, being shifted to the right by one unit. It's also being pushed up by four units, and it's a flattened out horizontally or vertically compressed parabola, still pointing in the upward direction because that's positive. And then the last one is standard or vert. I'm sorry, factored form. Now, factored form is also very useful. The number out in front does the same exact thing as the number out in front here. So apparently, this particular parabola that we're looking at over here, this third one is negative 2, so it's being flipped upside down, it's being stretched vertically, and it also tells us where the zeros are of this function. So that would be at negative 3 and at positive 2. Um, factored form is very useful for finding the x-intercepts, as we've seen before. So, here's the thing. What we want to try to do in this, the whole point of this uh, entire chapter is to be able to take a function that is written in this form and write it as that and put it in a form where it's really easy to, for us to see um, in factored form. Because if I give you something in standard form, it's not as useful as if I were to give it to you in factored form. Later on, we're going to even show you how to write it in vertex form. So you're taking the same parabola and writing it in three different ways. Each of these different ways has their usefulness. So let's see uh, steps to solve when or f steps to follow when graphing a quadratic factor function in factored form. Actually, we we just did this. So I'm not going to cover this. All right, all right. Example this. Example that. All right. Try graphing. Okay. I'm not really going to graph. The, actually, you know what I'll do is I'll open up Desmos and we'll see what we got. But over here, let's take a look back over here. This parabola crosses at positive 11 and positive 4. It's also sh uh, stretched uh, by 3. So, okay, well, let's go to this and go to Desmos. Graphing calculator. So let me just pull that graph up there. 3, x minus 11, x minus, oops, x minus 4. All right, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. All right, so you see it crosses at 4, it crosses at 11, and it's stretched. If I didn't have the 3 there, you would see how it's not stretched vertically, but then I stretch it. I know that I used to tell you that this thing actually makes it skinny. I don't like thinking of it as skinny as much as I like it thinking of it as vertically stretched because, I mean, look at this. It actually didn't really get skinnier at these two points. This is still at 4. This is still at 11. The only thing is I pulled the, you know, I pulled this stretchy part down and I pulled these part, these handles up. All right, let's see. Try graphing this thing. All right, well. That's not so pretty. All right, well, try graphing that thing. Well, what we would do is we would say, all right, 5x minus 1x plus 6 equals 
0. We want to find the zeros of this function, so I would set this thing equal to 0 or this thing equal to 0. So 5x minus 1 equals 0 or x plus 6 equals 0. This tells me x cannot, or this tells me x equals negative 6, and this tells me 5x equals 1, so x is equal to 1 fifth. I would venture to say that this graph crosses at 1 fifth and at negative 6. Let's try that. So Desmos, oops, 5x minus 1, parentheses, x plus 6. No, is it x minus 6? I think so. Let's see. x minus 6. Uh, no, x plus 6. Oops, there we go. Okay, good. So it crosses at negative 6, as I said before. And it also crosses at 1 fifth. Right? Yeah, 1 fifth. Which is also known as point 0.2. Oh, there we go. See, look at that point 0.2 right there. Boom. Booyah. I figured that one out. Well, here's the problem is, what happens if you're not in factored form? And let's cover that in the next video.